All right, guys, in class, towards the end of that video, I wanted to talk about um, that notation I was trying to do with the calculator to get it to, to just graph uh, a portion of that semicircle. I, we, we graphed this whole thing, and I just wanted, you know, the domain here is from negative uh, 2 to positive 2. Uh, and, and that's why we're getting these range values from 0 to 2. But I wanted in class, I just wanted to cut this in half. I wanted to say, let's just look at the domain values over here okay, in that quadrant. Uh, so I, I, I wanted to restrict it from 0 to 2, um, a, a, a more rigid restriction than what the, the function provides on its own. Uh, and this is the way we kind of type that in. Okay, we said we want our x values just to be between 0 and 2. And we graphed that, and it gave back the exact same thing. It didn't change anything. Um, and after class, kind of sat and thought about it and, and realized that there, there are two different ways that we can write this. Remember, this is an and statement. 0 is less than or equal to x, and x is less than or equal to 2. So if we go and hit second math, go over to logic, Click and. Okay, so now what we've got here is zero is less than or equal to x. And now I want to say x is less than or equal to less than or equal to two. All right. So that says the exact same thing that we had. It says the, what I've got currently typed in says that but as an and statement and, and that's the way it looks like that uh the ti 384 is programmed uh to understand it doesn't understand um that three-part inequality okay so we gotta break it up uh, now if i hit graph we see that it does give me that curve in the first quadrant that we we're looking for uh this is nice uh, because what can happen then, you see I've got some other functions written in here. Um, if I highlight this equal sign, it'll graph that function as well. And so now what I've told my calculator is I want to graph this, y1, and I also want to graph y2. But y2 is going to be a constant function, 2.2, when x is greater than or equal to 2.5. Um, now if I graph that, there you're seeing an x value of 2.5 and a y value of 2.2, and it's going to graph that. Uh, continuously forever beyond there. Um, and now if I go to y equals again, I'm going to go down to y3, and I got another function here that I want to restrict the domain to. I'm going to go x squared for x is less than or equal to 0. I graph that. Now we get that information. Uh, and you can start to see that maybe this looks like a piecewise function. Okay. Um, that's how we can graph a piecewise function using technology. Now what's in inter interesting, I think, uh, is that our calculator really doesn't know what's going on here. Um, we're just kind of telling it what to highlight in regards to the points to be plotted. Uh, so, um, you know, even the way I got this written in, I think here, I got that as an equal sign there for x is less than or equal to 0. And I got an equal sign up here as well for x is less than or equal to 0. So what my calculator is really doing is it's graphing a closed dot right there and a closed dot right there. And we know piecewise functions should not have that. Uh, but the calculator still does it because uh, of the way it's being programmed to uh, to show this. Okay, we're kind of using a, a I don't want to say a trick, but a but a technique that just gets portions of graphs to show up. Uh, and the, the calculator is not really worried whether it's violating function rules or not. Um, so uh, that's kind of a maybe a tool that you guys can use to help yourselves with uh, with piecewise functions, and, and then hopefully maybe. Uh, other functions in which we just restrict the domains and, and, and looking for the graphs.